Hello and welcome to another C3 Stingray video. This is, if you've watched part one and part two, part three, we really get down to the nitty gritty now. Um, in part three, we're going to take the door panels, the knee bolsters, those side center consoles, and we're going to rip the carpet off of those and re glue new carpet, and we're going to finish the hatch area. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, it's a good time to do it and hit that like button. And then you can check the playlist that has all these videos plus that headliner video in for a complete interior replacement. So, enough talk, let's just jump into part three. Well here I am taking the pieces of carpet out and kind of placing them where they need to go on the knee bolsters and the door panels. I got my carpet on eBay at Derby City Corvette for, I actually paid $349 for it when I bought it. It's now $399, went up 50 bucks. Plus there's shipping and tax, so you're probably looking at about $475 once it's all said and done. I think I paid a little less than $425 for mine. Now I'm taking the carpet off the door panel. The front side's glued, the back side's stapled down and glued. So you gotta work those staples out and pull them out with some pliers. I got a little like pick tool that I'm using to kind of pry the staple up and then pulling it out with the pliers. And it's a tedious job because it's all the way around the door. So you really need to decide if the carpet on your door panel is that bad and you need to replace it. If it's not, I just leave it on there. But if you do need to replace it, or if you're changing colors, you're obviously going to have to replace it. So you can see how I did it anyway. Once you get all the back side off, then you can start peeling the carpet off the front side. And it's basically just pull, trying to pull that glue off. And as you can see, a lot of remnants of carpet was left on, a lot of glue. So I have my heat gun and this razor blade, and I'm working the rest of it off. It really works well with the heat gun because it heats that glue up, makes it soft, and you can push it off. You see, I've been doing it for a while here, and it, like I said, it's a tedious job. It takes a while to get through all this glue and gunk and getting all those little pieces of leftover carpet off of there. And there's my first pass. It looks pretty good, but there's still some gunked up places, so I actually went over it one more time just to get any heavy spots off. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's perfectly smooth. I mean, perfectly, all that glue's completely off because you're going to be gluing it back down anyway. Now I'm on the back side, getting this big chunks of glue off. And as you can see, there's like little metal pieces. That's where the screws go through that screw into the door. And I'm leaving mine in. You could take those out and replace them somehow. I'm not really sure where to get those pieces to replace it. And as you can see too, I taped off everything because I'm going to be spraying glue everywhere and I don't want to get glue all over the door panel. So I've taped it off and glued it. And you can see how the carpet was on the other side, how it just like pushes up against the edge. So I got my glue on Amazon for $17. This stuff is awesome. This stuff it holds really well. If you see my other video where I did my headliner, I glued that in with that. And this stuff works great. And you're supposed to spray it one direction, wait five minutes, spray it another direction, wait five minutes, and spray it another direction and wait five minutes, and then finally stick it on. I only did it twice because I was spraying both the, the panel and the back side of the carpet, so in a sense I've sprayed it four times. But I did it twice. I waited five minutes between each one, and then I was able to stick it down. As I said, this glue holds really well. This, this stuff isn't going anywhere once you get it glued down. So I'm lining that up, getting that pushed down, smoothed out. And on the back side, now obviously I'm not going to staple this back in, I'm just using the glue again. And I'm gluing the edge and I'm gluing the edge of the carpet. It's not really carpet there, it's kind of like vinyl there. I'm gluing them both at the same time, kind of like I did as a front. I'm doing two passes. I waited five minutes between each pass, well, five minutes between the pass and then five minutes before I stuck it down. And it stuck really well. I mean, this stuff, like I said, it really holds well. Now I'm just working it around, pulling it tight, and getting it down good. And it, it really sticks well. I think I've mentioned that, haven't I?
probably the worst part of the whole job is this gluing stuff. I mean, we got a lot more stuff to glue down here, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. That's that corner I really had to work down. All right, now I'm poking holes where those screws should go. What I do is I take this pick I have and I heat it with that torch. You really can't ever see me heating it, but I'm actually heating the end of that right there. I'm heating it up, making it hot, and then I'm pushing it through the carpet. The real reason for doing that is it kind of singes the edge of the carpet so it won't run. Because otherwise you might have some, you know, fragments of carpet there that might grab on something and pull and you'll get a run in there. But doing it this way, it singes and it makes it a really nice clean hole that you can stick a screw in and not worry about grabbing any carpet remnants and twisting them around. So I did that all the way around for all the screw holes. Now I'm doing the speaker, which I'm going to have to cut that speaker out, but the screw holes were kind of round right in the corner, so I wanted to make sure I got them good. Now I'm heating this blade up and cutting, doing the same thing and just cutting the speaker out. As you can see, it turned out pretty well. And here's both the door panels done. I finished them. Didn't show the other one. Kind of got the idea. Now we're going to do those knee bolsters, which were a little bit more of a hassle because the carpet really wasn't cut that accurately. You kind of had to shape it some. But I'm pulling the carpet off. And now I'm trying to shape these things to see what I need to do to make them work. This one's like really jagged. I don't know. The cut on this is just like so crooked it's ridiculous. This one wasn't as bad but still as you can see well there actually it was that bad. It's the one that's really crooked. What I did was I took a a yardstick, a metal yardstick I had and screwed it down to my workbench wooden workbench and made a straight line to hold that straight and I cut it straight just so it go on a little better now here this is the one that goes where the steering wheel is and I'm like marking the hole it's like a little it's not a hole it's a spot that just cut out that goes around the steering wheel so I was marking that from the old one just so I knew where to cut it Now I'm getting ready to put these on. Once again, I get the glue out. I'm spraying both the carpet and the knee bolsters at the same time. Um, I didn't show any pause here, but I did five minutes of gap between each spray, and then five minutes before I actually stuck it down, which is actually more than five minutes. I did both of them at the same time. You might want to do each one separately, but I, don't know, I guess I was getting in a hurry here. There's a little like piece of plastic that goes around where that steering wheel is and you kind of have to work that carpet behind that. It's not a big deal. But that's what I'm doing there is I'm working that carpet behind that little piece that goes around the steering wheel. And just smoothing everything out. And there was like some spots that needed to be cut out on the back side of that one with the steering wheel. And we're also going to have to cut some big holes where those bolts go in. Now what I did is I took my pick and went from the back side to figure out where those holes were for sure. Ran those through. Obviously I'm going to have to make them way bigger than that. So what I ended up doing was taking a socket. I found an old socket and I used that to heat up the circle, the size of the circle that I needed to cut. The socket wouldn't push through as you can see where this round heating the socket up. And I was able to place that right where the big hole was where that bolt goes through and it makes a perfect circle and it burns it really good and then I was able to take my razor and cut it the rest of the way out and I just kept kind of going back and forth and this is one this one I had cut out pretty good and I would just go back with the 
the socket just to kind of singe the edges and make it make it a solid hole that it wasn't going to run. And I'm doing the same the same thing on the other side. The socket idea works pretty good because it won't go all the way through. I mean, unless I guess you sharpen the edges of your socket, which I didn't do. It will not go all the way through, but it makes a perfect hole for you to cut from. As you can see, it turned out pretty good. You'd think we were done gluing, but no. Now we got those stupid side panels. And I've already ripped the carpet off those. I ripped them off before I even got it out of the car. But there's still those clumps of glue that I'm trying to work off. I said remnants of glue is not going to matter but those big like piles of glue they're going to be a problem. Now I'd taken the panel and traced it onto the carpet so I knew where to spray the glue at because there's a lot of overhang on this and you need to keep that overhang. So you can see the line where I traced the panel onto the back of the carpet so I knew where to spray this then. And the rest of that overhang you need to leave on there do not cut that off. Once again, I sprayed both of them twice. There was a five minute delay in between each spray. And this, like I've said before, this stuff really sticks good. Also, I taped that off, the other part of the panel off, so I wouldn't get any glue on anything else. I have that rag over it, and I got the edges taped off. And you just gotta work it down flat. Once you think you got it good, flip it over and kind of trim it make it match the top part but the bottom part you gotta leave alone see that overhang on the bottom that stays there you want that there do not cut that off that would be really a disaster if you did because you will have a big hole on the side if you do that there that is cut off it looks pretty good now I'm going to go ahead and burn the holes for the screws on that. Just so I don't have to deal with that later. Makes it way easier to find the screws too when you're putting these things in. And now we're looking at the carpet in the back of the hatch. This is where the, the speaker side and you can see how the old carpet came out had a really heavy duty rubber on the back. And it's obviously, I think this is the original carpeting there. The front had been replaced, but I don't think the back was ever replaced. It looks like original carpet. It's way thicker than this new stuff I bought. But this still should work out okay. Now I had to take the speaker completely out so I could line up this carpet. And you want the carpet kind of tucked behind there anyway to hold it down and make it all look smooth. I believe there were four or seven millimeters holding that in. And now the other problem is the carpet right there. It goes down to the edge of these compartment doors. So now I'm going to take these, this whole thing out. There's like seven millimeter screws all the way around this thing. So right now you can't see it, but I'm taking the screws out on that side. And we're going to have to take them out all the way around and remove this just to make it easier to get this carpet in on the edges. It's make it as nice as you can and you, I guess you could cut around that but it would be a bad idea. So now I'm trying to work it over the hump. Get this in. Now I had taken out that target top holder bracket. And right now I'm using a, a nut driver and pushing down over where those two studs are where that target top bracket was. Now this this work for me, is it a good idea or a bad idea? I'm not sure because I didn't realize it at the time that this carpet actually went over the top of this um, target top holder. I mean, I figured that out after the fact, but this still worked for me because pushing that through, it made a tiny hole, you know, for that stud to pop out and I put the nut on and then I was able to fix it anyway. But anyway, back to the speaker, I cut a big X there to the edges of that speaker and then I just kept cutting once I had the X in there I could see where the edges were better and I, I just kept cutting myself cutting it around the speaker hole it 
with that target top there, bolted, nutted, bolted down, it was holding everything in place really well, so it was easier to cut this. And now I can put that speaker back in and see it covers up the edges and looks pretty nice. Now this carpet's not going anywhere. And that's what it looks like right now, but the problem is this target top holder. That's really not how it should go. I guess it wouldn't really matter if it did go that way, but that's not how it originally was. The carpet went over those nuts. As you can see, here's the original one. And it's cut. The one flap is already broke off, but this flap went over the nut. So I went back, got a piece of chalk, and outlined this thing so I could figure out where to cut it at. As I said, this doing it this way I had two tiny holes where that covers the carpet but this is also covered by that um, plastic cover that goes over this too so you're not going to see that and really, really once you took this up you couldn't see the holes either so this worked out well for me you may come up with a different idea but doing it this way I got this exactly the cut exactly where I wanted to cut so I made a slit that way and I had to make a slit on the other side, then I had you basically cutting an H. And then you can erase that those chalk marks. You had to make a little bit longer slit on the one side because of the way the thing is shaped. On the side closest to the seat, it's a little bit wider than the other side. Let's see, now I'm able to put it on, down there. I'll put those nuts back on, and then as you can see, the way the carpet's set up, it'll just push right down into those gaps. And both sides pushed in nicely. Now I can put that cover on. I think it turned out pretty nice. See, it looks pretty good there. And the carpet's the way it was originally now. I mean, I guess you could have left it the other way too, but I was just trying to keep it the way it was. You're not, you can't even see the nut on this side. The other side, you can see the carpet a little bit that goes over the nut. Now I'm putting that piece that goes over the hump and behind the seats. And I had to take the seat belt out get that carpet in there. Um, I can't remember, it's a large torque screw. I can't remember the size right now. I'm gonna try to put this back in. I'm kinda overlapping it over the carpet, which to me, this holds the carpet down. The carpet's not gonna move then. You know, I think it works better. Now I'm heating up that pick again and I'm gonna burn every one of the holes where those seven millimeter screws go. I'm lining those all up. Yes it's a tedious job. It's lots of little <laughs> I like that the video cut there it looked like my arm was going right over the torch but the torch had been removed by then. So basically I'm just working myself around this whole compartment door and putting all the screws back in which is helping pull the carpet tight. And I will go back in later and cut off the excess carpet that's on the inside of these. And it looks pretty nice. And now we're doing main carpet going on now those like I said velcro to the front of those compartment doors so you 
got to work it underneath that storage compartment cover. Pull the carpet through. And it's basically getting it in the right spot where you want it. I took out the target top latch. Because it was easier to pull that carpet through and then I started thinking why not just put that latch right over the top of the carpet instead of putting those push pins back in. So I didn't even replace the push pins. I just put well you'll see in a moment. As you can see this new carpet comes with velcro. It came with new pieces of velcro but I used the old that was on the doors and the new that was on the carpet because it was sticking really good. And I just kept working it pushing it back, trying to get make sure it is as smooth as possible. And I'm using that nut driver again. That works really well for getting the studs. If you have studs, you can just put a nut driver over the top of them, just hit it with the back of your hand, and it pops right through. Now I'm putting that target top latch back on. Now that's what's holding the carpet in place. Now that isn't how it originally was. They had it cut out around that and I just put the carpet underneath it. Which to me works way better. Now I'm putting in the carpet retaining trim on the side. And I'm going to have to pop that bottom strut to get that other piece in. But first you need to put in that back piece of trim before you put the side ones in. Yep, I'm putting more of the re carpet retaining trim on the passenger side. I've already got the speaker and everything in this side. Obviously, you need to put your speaker covers back on. I popped the latch and I'm putting that last trim piece on. And here it is. The back part is done. I'm sorry for that big glare of sun or whatever. But it, it looks pretty nice. This is such a long video, we're going to have to continue on with the front in the next video. But this is the back hatch and all those other door panel and side panels and knee bolster pieces. Well, we're getting close to getting all that carpet back in this car. In the next video, we're going to put all the carpet in the front and replace all those pieces and knee bolsters and the dash pad and all that stuff. So it's a pretty involved video. If you haven't subscribed yet, you need to subscribe, like the channel, and check out this playlist that has all these videos together. This five part series with the interior and an extra one with the headliner. And if you need any new or used C3, C4, C5 Corvette parts, check out my website at c3stingray.com. And I guess that is it. I will see you on the road.